what's it like working in tech sales and being a content creator? Uh, it's actually pretty easy because I get the luxury to work from home. Uh, I've been doing it for four years now and being in tech sales, it's really great because not only do I have a great career, I have a great salary, you can transition really easy into picking up that tripod, picking up that camera and going straight into creating content. My lifestyle is pretty easy. I go to the gym, I go to my rooftop, I chill in the house and I clean up and stuff. You guys know that. And uh, so it's a little bit easier for me to transition and start picking up that camera to create. I don't have to drive home from work and get stuck in traffic. There's no crazy commute. So, you know, I'm saving a couple of hours a day compared to someone who's, you know, driving out in the field and going to an office. So I'm really grateful for that. And, uh, you know, by the way, I've been in tech sales for about 10 years. So I've been afforded to actually have this lifestyle, right? Most tech sales employees have the ability to work from home because you're selling a software, right? Or you're selling some sort of technology or a service. And so, um, yeah, it's great. Um, I'm able to afford San Diego. As you guys know, it's extremely expensive out here. It's one of the most expensive cities in the nation. But yeah, if you guys have some questions, go ahead and comment below. I would love to answer any questions for you. Just wanted to share a little bit with you guys. So I'm gonna get back to work and uh, make some money. <laughs> All right, so I decided to step out the house. I usually work from home, but there's a new cafe called Hinar. So I'm gonna hit it up, try it out and uh, live out. Let's get it. getting a quick workout. The gym is closed uh, for the holidays, uh, but I wanna make sure that I'm consistent for the entire year. So my goal is to get to 195, and so I'm getting closer to it. I gained 10 pounds this year, um, so I wanna keep on going and just really roll into the new years with momentum. So let's get this workout in. Unless you talking numbers, we ain't speaking about the right things. Switch up on my nigga for a figure, that's not like me. Batty with a body in the lobby, she like nice things. She used to know me then, she like me now, that's funny timing. Eyes been on that prize, I cop that crib off for that timepiece. I'm trying to see the globe and sell out shows until the flight leaves. They wanna ride my ties, but they ain't even ride or die, please. But I've been short on time, been in the prime, I'm my prime easy. I said I never changed and leveled up, I guess I lied, yeah. Off that strain of potent just to feel like I'm alive, yeah. Mix that with that potion just to feel like I'm that guy, yeah. So know the one you talking to, you way outside your line, yeah. This incline bench is hella different from the gym that I usually go to. This bar is like super fat and uh, it's just awkward on my shoulders, but you know, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Um, no excuses, but it actually feels kind of cool, like taking advantage of my amenities. This gym isn't really that bad. I mean, if I turn this around, you can tell like it's standard. And then over there, there's like a little cardio uh, area. And then there's also like a, a yoga room. So um, I'm just used to like the bougie gyms and everything. So that one's like five minute walking distance from uh, my. You know, this actually has enough stuff and uh, I'm just super grateful. So let's keep going. I'm from the pit, I'm out of the trench, my nigga. We look at the dread, my nigga. We ran, she all on my way. I never let them play me, but they claiming that they know my songs. I tell them, quote the lines until I'm goaded, bitch, I'm going off. Loyal to my soil and the culture, I'm that chosen one. I just got a bag, she wanna fuck, I think she know I'm star. I can't do no wrong, look in her eyes, she wouldn't know I'm scarred. They try to justify me going up like they don't know he raw. Off of that doja, fuck what they told you, I'm never sober. Gripping the split.
Slip for the chip on my shoulder, trying to decode this. They label me thug. It's a quick chest workout, quick triceps. I'm already winded from just those three exercises. So, oh yeah, I did biceps too, but I might try to do pull-ups, but I don't know why I did biceps right before I decided to do pull-ups. It's gonna be extremely hard, but let's see how it goes, man. Wish me luck. Like I said, quick, easy workout. I was like less than 30 minutes, just wanted to get the blood pumping. Um, it's getting a little dark right now, so I'm gonna go upstairs and we're gonna do the Q&A. Um, I, I asked some questions uh, on Instagram, and so I'm gonna answer them for you. Uh, so let's get it, let's answer these questions. <laughs> The sun is setting, had a good little workout. So let's get straight into these broadcast channel questions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically I have an Instagram page. You can follow me at Mr. Nate Barnes, but I also have a broadcast channel where it's a little bit more intimate, it's a little bit more conversational, and I have open-ended questions. So, you know, I asked my broadcast channel people like, hey, you know, ask me anything. So I'm gonna answer all of these questions here. If you see me looking at the screen, it's because I have a screenshot of all the questions. So we're gonna start off with this one. Does religion or faith play a large role in your life? And the answer is yes. I didn't grow up in church, I didn't grow up religious, but I definitely have a Christian background. Um, I kind of discovered it when I was in my early 20s and I was like, you know what? I need to be around positive people. I was kind of going down the wrong path. I ended up moving outside of Vegas just to switch it up. A lot of my close peers were either, um, I mean, I had a, a good friend that got shot in the chest. Unfortunately, he died. Um, one of my best friends, he got addicted to drugs. Um, and yeah, so, you know, I, I was never like a really bad kid, you know what I mean? And I always had that good moral compass or not good moral compass, but just I had a moral compass in general. And so, I ended up moving to Arizona. I didn't really have a lot. Uh, I'm not trying to make this a sob story, but uh, yeah, I, I started getting into self-help books. I started reading a, uh, reading the Bible, and I, that's where I started discovering the truth. You know what I mean? And Deuteronomy was one of the one of the books that actually stuck out to me the most. You know, like you know, blessings for obedience and um, you know, curses for disobedience and it really stuck out to me uh, because I could relate to basically uh, some of the curses, right? And, you know, a lot of my people were also, um, it just resonated with me, you know what I mean? So I'm like, wow, there's a lot of truth. The Bible is, is living and it's present. Uh, it's not just a historical thing, it's real. And, and so, yeah, so it does play a role in my life. Uh, yeah, there you go. The next question is, do you regret going through maths? I do not regret going on Married at First Sight. Uh, I'm a risk taker. I definitely was intentional about finding a partner, uh, but I just wasn't prepared, right? Um, I don't think anybody can prepare for something like Married at First Sight. And just like any, any show, right? Um, you know, the idea on paper is really great, but let's be realistic. It's very hard starting at the finish line and trying to build a relationship uh, in eight weeks. It's just not normal and I think that's why there isn't really a great track record and especially now when you mix entertainment with relationships uh, there's always going to be um, let's just say some curveballs thrown in the mix and what I mean by that is, is a little bit of editing and, and you know I noticed a pattern on Married at First Sight. You know there's uh, two black couples there's like a a weird ambiguous couple or an interracial couple uh, you got an asian couple and then a couple of white couples right 
uh, and there's always one there's always one couple that has the ideal right and everyone's rooting for it you got the underdog couple and then you have basically uh, a couple that are just complete opposites right and, and so you know just looking at that objectively look, come on guys like, a lot of this stuff is curated and unfortunately like you know we did try to work it out but it just didn't work in, in my in my best analogy Stasha and I we were on we were in different chapters but for her she thought we were in different books and so that was a little extreme for me and therefore it didn't work out I'm better off single and uh, I'm glad that we decided to split up <laughs> so next question what is your favorite cheat meal or guilty pleasure as far as food goes. I think one of my guilty pleasures, I, I honestly don't really like sweets, um, but a Krispy Kreme donut is fire. Um, I do like Reese's, Pieces, Buttercups, um, and then cheesecake, just just a regular old cheesecake. Uh, it's good, because it's not too sweet. Um, so yeah, those are some of my cheat meals, I guess desserts. Um, Okay, so next question. Is there anything you did in 2023 that you will do different in 2024? Um, I think 2023, I was very comfortable being alone, right? And I think there's a combination of a lot of things, right? I've been working from home because I'm in tech sales for over uh, around four years. Uh, what else? <laughs> I, I live downtown, right? Definitely not gonna have roommates at this age, right? My family, my sisters, they're two hours away. My dad's back in Vegas. And I, I just got really comfortable just being home to myself. I didn't really go out too much. And so I, I think I could have done a little bit better by putting more effort into just reaching out to friends and hanging out more. Um, I don't know, for some reason, I was just really focused on work and just, um, that's about it, so. Uh, yeah, I think I would have just changed up and just had a little bit more fun. Next question. How's therapy going? Any revelations about yourself and your journey? What I found out is I, I was actually talking to my therapist about why I'm so comfortable being alone. And, you know, I was expressing that I used to be very extroverted and I was super social and I, you know, like crave to be in a social environment. And now it's the complete opposite, right? And she says that she has a lot of clients that are in the same situation. So, so we started talking about the pandemic. We started talking about basically my work from home. She asked me like, when you, when you go to the gym, do you just work out by yourself or do you do group, chat, uh, group classes? And I was like, yeah, I work from home by myself. I go to the gym by myself. I live by myself. Um, I'm very independent. And she's like, well, there's your answer. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, she challenged me to like, you know, get outside the house, work work at a coffee shop twice a week, make an effort to like go outside and like just hang out with your friends, even though, even if you don't like really feel like it. So, um, I mean, it's it's pretty obvious, right? Like, like, but when when someone else tells you like, hey, like, this is what it is, and then it starts to actually click for you, and it's like, damn, like, yeah, I just need to put in more effort into doing that stuff. So yeah. Um, just getting outside of my comfort zone and, and for the first time in my entire life it's weird to say but i need to get outside of my comfort zone which is go outside <laughs> and yeah i'm just a little bit more introverted uh, i think that just it's just maturity where i'm at in my life and yeah so i'm just taking steps to just put in that effort to uh, be social again next question what areas of your life are you going to try and improve for 2024 um that's a good question. Let me see. Proof. So I, I think cooking, right? Uh, more. I, I eat a lot of DoorDash. It's a really bad habit, right? Uh, and I don't want to make that excuse anymore as like, oh, I'm a single guy and you know, it's just convenient and it's quick. I don't have anybody to cook for. Um, you know, I, I think that's just more of an excuse. And I want to be able to just cook from home. I know what I, I know what I'm putting into my body less salty and sugary foods. Um, so I, I, I wanna take pride in that and just be able to say, yes, I cook, you know, four or five times out of the week versus once a month. <laughs> it's bad. 
Okay, so next question. So the next question is, what's it like living alone? Living alone is great because I don't have to, I'm clean. Um, obviously, you guys see like a lot of my reels and my YouTube, I'm making my bed, I'm cleaning, I'm wiping off my counters and all that stuff. Uh, it's not for show, that's not for me to, you know, like prove to somebody, that's just me. And, you know, I have a really nice place, uh, I take pride in it. And, you know, when, when I do have guests, like I want them to be impressed. I want them to, you know, uh, feel comfortable, right? Like I don't want them stepping over freaking dirty underwear and socks and like, you know what I mean? Shoes all over the place and just like, that's disgusting. I'm saying like, I'm in my mid thirties. So like, I want something nice, grown, sexy and all the goods. Do you think having therapy is helpful? Yes. All right, so those are all the questions. Um, if you do have any comments, concerns, or insights for me, go ahead and comment below. low-key fell off of the shadow work journal so I decided to get back into it because it actually helps you really think about what triggers you what you're dealing with inside when you have certain situations come around and um, you know thinking objectively like that about certain situations that you are in um, I'm able to actually control like, okay, like maybe I'm overreacting. I can kind of see outside of my body and be like, you know what? I typically do these sort of behaviors when I spend too much money, right? Or whatever. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, it's really good. I, I enjoyed it when I started it, but I just fell off for like a couple months. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm back on it. And I think it's a good activity for me personally, because like when I like chill, right? I just watch TV or I just watch YouTube, right? So it's just like mindless kind of stuff. And you know, work is work, but what am I doing to like, improve myself, right? What am I doing to enhance my well being um, outside of the gym, right? And there's not a lot. So, um, I want to continue pushing and moving that needle forward and um, I think it's going to be really good for me. So I'm going to start dedicating myself. It's called the Shadow Work Journal. Um, I actually found it on TikTok, but it's actually really good. I followed the author and I messaged her and I thanked her for uh, this amazing book. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to finish it up. And there's there's really good things in here. It's, it's really about self-reflection and uh, yeah.